Dr. Chang, this morning at uh, the symposium, uh, you, you brought a presentation on glaucoma genetics and basically asking facts or fiction. I'm going to ask you, is it fact or fiction? Well, uh, with genetics, there's always some that are facts and some that are fiction. Uh, right now, what's exciting in glaucoma is that we have discovered some new genes uh, related to testing for pseudoexfoliation glaucoma, the LOX-L1 as well as the tiger myosillin gene, which is about 3 to 4 percent of open angle glaucoma. And more recently, there have been some genome-wide genome association studies, GWAS, that have looked at different factors associated with glaucoma, such as the increased cup to disc ratio, high pressure. There are some genetic and molecular components that relate to the pathogenesis of glaucoma. However, they aren't the type of genetic test that says, yes, no, you're going to have the disease. So if someone says, do glaucoma genetic testing to find out if you're going to get it, that's still fiction. Do you expect uh, genetics to play more of a role in determining uh, patient outcomes in the future? Certainly, as we collect more data, as the, uh, we have an opportunity to look at genes from multiple different patients, as well as normal controls, we may be able to find uh, factors that could predispose someone, but then maybe there's an environmental component that's sort of a trigger to the uh, genetic predisposition. And that's something that we're seeing with the pseudoexfoliation type, for example, because the prevalence of the abnormal copy may be high, but the actual penetrance or expression of this abnormality may re depend upon uh, environmental triggers. As research continues to evolve in, in, in the in, gen in genetics, especially in the area of glaucoma. How do you see that change in the outcome for uh, clinicians and how they treat their patients? I think right now what's most exciting about genetic research is it helps us to get one step closer to understanding the complex pathogenesis of a chronic multifactorial disease such as glaucoma or even, for example, macular degeneration we make these small little inroads of finding one part of the disease and how it's related genetically. So then you can look at the next step and find maybe another molecular target for future therapies. So while it doesn't help you necessarily predict who's going to get the disease just off of one test, it may actually help us understand the disease better so we can target our therapies better. Okay. Thank you, Dr.